This is Titanoceratops. It was a request from Victrix via our Patreon and Discord, so thanks. It's a good name, Titanoceratops. Mm Mm-hmm. It was a chasmosaurine ceratopsian that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now New Mexico in the U.S. And chasmosaurs, they're known for their large brow horns and the big frills. And one of the most well-known chasmosaurs is Triceratops. So Titanoceratops was a large ceratopsian. (laughs) I hope so. If it's named Titano and it was small, (laughs) that'd be pretty disappointing. Yes. And it looked a lot like Triceratops. It walked on four legs. It had the short tail and the large frill and the two horns above its eyes and a nasal horn. And being a ceratopsian, it also had a beak, a rostrum, because that's that was my big takeaway from our ceratopsian episode was that's what makes it a ceratopsian, is that beak. Titanoceratops is one of the largest known ceratopsids, which, like you were just saying, Garrett, based on its name, maybe that's not surprising, is estimated to be about 22.3 feet or 6.8 meters long and estimated to weigh 7.2 tons. It's big. Yeah. Although Gregory Paul estimated in 2016 that it was 21.3 feet or six and a half meters long and weighing 4.9 tons. Still big. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was similar in size to Triceratops. There's a large Triceratops was estimated to weigh about seven tons, but there are larger Triceratops. There's one that's estimated to weigh 7.8 tons. Also big. So it's in the same ballpark, but yeah, it is a little funny that it might be smaller than a Triceratops, even though it's Titanoceratops. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So the skull of Titanoceratops that's been found is incomplete, but it's very big. It's about 8.7 feet or 2.65 meters long. Yeah. Now, uh, Titanoceratops is a controversial genus. It was named in 2011 by Nicholas Longrich. The type and only species is Titanoceratops oranos, and the genus name Titanoceratops means titanic horn face. It refers to the Greek titans and also refers to the dinosaur's large size. The species name, Oranos, is after Oranos or Uranus, the father of the Greek titans. And it's named based on a specimen that was originally thought to be Pentaceratops. This is where the controversy comes in. The holotype, OMNH10165, is of a partial skeleton with a mostly complete skull and jaws, including a section of the frill, and also vertebrae, ribs, parts of the arms and legs, parts of the pelvis, and ossified tendons. That holotype was found either in the upper Fruitland Formation or the lower Kirtland Formation, because the original site where the fossil was found has been lost, unfortunately. They haven't been able to find the quarry where it was found so far, but they do know that it comes from an area with fine-grained sediments with flecks of orange amber. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Flecks of amber in the sediment. So that helps narrow it down a bit. Yeah, that doesn't happen all the time. The fossils were first found in 1941 in New Mexico by J. Willis Stovall, Juan Langston Jr., and Donald E. Savage. And then they were prepared and mounted not until 1995. (laughs) (laughs) 50-something years later? Yeah, because for a long time they weren't considered suitable to be mounted because some of the bones were crushed and fragile. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of times those ceratopsian frills especially can be really in rough shape. Yeah. They can get pretty broken to bits. But it was eventually put on display in the 90s at the Oklahoma Museum of Natural History. Now, Pentaceratops was common in the area where the fossils were found, so they identified it as Pentaceratops and apparently reconstructed the frill to look like Pentaceratops because, again, (laughs) they, they didn't have the whole frill. Yeah, and when it's broken in pieces, it's like it takes a lot of... Not artistic license, but interpolating where the bones would have been, Mm -hmm. what the exact shape of the frill would have been, too. Yeah, and so then in 1998, Thomas Lemon described the fossils as an unusually large pentaceratops, because again, it had been found in the same area. Longridge, however, found titanoceratops, the same, these fossils, to have more shared features with Triceratops and Taurosaurus than Pentaceratops. And that was kind of what started going down to study it and figure out that it was a separate genus. In a blog post, Longrich, who named Titanoceratops, said that Pentaceratops was, quote, highly variable, end quote, meaning some specimens had certain features that others didn't have, and that one very large skeleton, 
that one that was mounted at the Oklahoma Museum, seemed out of place, especially the skull. And he said that it looked more like Triceratops and that the parts that did look like Pentaceratops, quote, the characteristic butterfly hornlets on the midline of the frill weren't real bone. They were just sculpted out of plaster, end quote. Oh, (laughs) interesting. Yes. So in the paper where Longridge named Titanoceratops, he identified 22 characters that made the specimen different from Pentaceratops, including its large size, weighing over 11,000 pounds or 5,000 kilograms, and a femur, a thigh bone, that is straight and vertically oriented. This femur is similar to elephants and sauropods and would have helped support its weight. To give you an idea of how big it was, one of the brow horns is nearly 36 inches or about 91 centimeters long. Oh yeah, that's big. I think that's about like a triceratops too. Mm Mm-hmm. So Longridge said it was unlikely that the large specimen was so different because of individual variation, because its frill and horns were, quote, too extreme, and there were differences in the sinuses and nasals, which don't usually have individual variation. He also said that its distinguishing features weren't related to its large body size, as there are ceratopsids that are about the same size with similar derived features, like the brow horns coming from behind the eyes, and having really long, strongly curved horns. Now, in addition to being much bigger and probably weighing over twice as much as a typical pentaceratops, titanoceratops, or the newly named titanoceratops, had large, forward-curving brow horns that were more like triceratops than pentaceratops, and it had a nasal horn at the front of the nostrils, also like triceratops. There's also more details, like the edges of the frill looking more like torosaurus or triceratops frills, not as rod-like as other pentaceratops specimens. Hmm. And Longridge said that ontogeny, or growth, didn't explain these differences because the specimen has features that indicate it's a mature adult, such as fusions in the bones and a rough texture on its skull, and other pentaceratops specimens are also adults, but they still look different. He wrote, quote, The simplest explanation that fits the facts is that OMNH-10165 is what it appears to be, a giant ceratopsid related to triceratops, end quote. He did say it would be helpful to find more fossils, especially an intact frill, to know for sure. Yeah, that's always helpful. Yeah. He also found that Titanoceratops is a sister taxon of a clade that includes Eotriceratops, Triceratops, and Taurosaurus. He's Team Taurosaurus. And he named this Triceratopsini. Now, compared to Triceratops, Titanoceratops had a longer, thinner frill, a longer snout, and its brow horns were a bit bigger. Titanoceratops also lived about 8 million years earlier than Triceratops. It's estimated to have lived about 74 million years ago. Longridge suggested that Titanoceratops could even be a direct ancestor to Triceratops. That's funny, because you would think a good name for it then would be something like the earlier Triceratops, Mm. but there's already Eotriceratops, which means (laughs) Dawn Triceratops, so I guess they had to go a different direction with the name. Yep, go with the size. Now, not everybody agrees with Titanoceratops being its own genus. Some paleontologists argue, no, it's really a large pentaceratops. And Thomas Lehman, who didn't mention Longridge's Titanoceratops when he did a later study in 2015 on that specimen, the OMNH-10165, he still called it pentaceratops. Hmm. And in 2020, Denver Fowler and Elizabeth Friedman Fowler found that Titanoceratops was Pentaceratops and that the specimen seemed unique because it was very old and very large. Oh, that's interesting because I guess a cynic would point out that they're on team Triceratops is the same as Taurosaurus. They're always lumping together these (laughs) Ceratopsians. Yeah, it seems like one of those cases where you just need more fossils to help settle the debate. Yeah. And it's, it's sort of a definition question of mm-hmm. like, where do you draw the line? Which it's hard to draw the line. But for the sake of this segment, we're just going to say Titanoceratops. Yep. I mean, even if it is the same as Pentaceratops, it just becomes a junior synonym. Mm-hmm. And that means that whenever you say Titanoceratops, everything you say just applies to that one specimen, which is now a Pentaceratops. Yes. It's easier to say Titanoceratops than (laughs) OMNH10165. It is, yes. (laughs) But anyway, it lived in a wet, well-forested area, and other dinosaurs that lived around the same time and place include the Tyrannosauroid Bastahiverser, 
the troodontid quote unquote Soornitholestes robustus, the dubious theropod Peronacodon, an indeterminate ornithomimid, hadrosaurids, including Parasaurolophus, the Pachycephalosaur stegoceros, and the Ankylosaur notocephalosaurus, and also the Ceratopsian pentaceratops, if Titanoceratops is valid. And other animals that lived around the same time and place include fish, turtles, crocodilians, and mammals. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left. <laughs> 